so so like when you get into wholesale, you're looking at you're using like Chrome extensions like maybe RevSeller or AMZ Scout to try to get an estimated monthly velocity of that ASIN. And then you're looking at all the competitors that are on it and then you're looking at their quantity. And then based on that, the, the competitors that are going to be competitively priced with you, you don't care about all of them, but the ones that are going to be competitively priced with you. And then, and then you could kind of figure it out. Like let's say you have uh, five competitors on their product moves, uh, 300 a month you're going to order, what, about uh, 50 because you're going to be the sixth seller. So 300 divided by six, you're going to order about 50. You know, if you want to order a month worth or 100 if you're going to be ordering two months worth. But it really helps to prevent tie-up of cash flow. Margins kind of like a... Most uh, yeah, most, most, like, most like, a lot of, lot, like a lot of sellers, yeah. So it's just getting that balance. It's finding a balance. It's like you really got to look at it like investing. friend of mine says the same thing about it. He's like, it's like a stock portfolio. Some stocks are going to do really well. And some yeah. are going to be dogs. Yeah. You just wait them out. Yeah. And, and some of the dogs, we just want to turn it. It's, you know, I, I bought a slim fast keto and uh, spent way too much on it. Bought like $20,000 worth and Amazon jumped on it. And, uh, you know, I ended up losing like $2,000, but we needed to just turn it. We were sitting on it. It's like, you know what? Let's just bring it down to Amazon's price. And it's funny because there's some listings that we sell on with Amazon where they don't even compete with us. You know, everyone thinks like if Amazon's selling on a listing, you have to stay away. There's some they don't compete and others you can bring it down to a penny and they'll be right there at a penny with you, you know? It's, it's strange. Do you get a lot of price alerts that you have to deal with? Um, they've, they're not as frequent as they were, you know, they're not as frequent as they were, but the price alerts is kind of, it's another new nuisance. So, so if you're unfamiliar with price alerts, what that is, is now Amazon looks across all e-commerce, e like they're looking at walmart.com, Target, and if you have a price, a price of a product that they feel is not competitive to those other marketplaces, what they'll do is they'll either deactivate your listing until you fix the price or they'll suppress the buy box. If you've ever look, been on Amazon and there's a listing without a buy box, it's because they suppressed it and that messes with their, the SEO, search engine optimization, because now they can't just order it when they look at it, they have to click it's available like sellers and, and just an additional step. They make it a nuisance on purpose because they feel like it's not value to the customer. But remember when I say like day, it's not actual people, it's all algorithm. Right. Like the problem with having 200 million plus listings is everything's algorithmic. And that's the problem like when you're saying contacting them and stuff, they don't have a system where people are looking at it. No one's reviewing it, it's all this algorithm. I spoke to, uh, I don't remember her name, Leslie from Riverbend Consulting. Yeah, I today. saw her there, yeah. 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 I had a nice long conversation with yeah. her. Yeah. And um, she told me about some scenarios where uh, the people who are working in some of those areas of Amazon, specifically people who are dealing with IP complaints, she said that if mm -hmm. they approve too many people in a row, they kind of get tagged or earmarked. And if that person who they approve gets suspended again for whatever reason, that it's a mark against the person who approved them. Yeah. So that's pretty that. scary because, yeah. you know, so that, that person who's looking at your, uh, your plan of action, for example, like yeah. you said, you got denied five times. Yeah. Maybe it was a computer, maybe it was a human, who knows? Yeah. But they're scared to approve you. Yes. It's yes. Crazy, dude. Yes. And, and another thing that I learned from, uh, Ed Rosenberg from Amazon lawyer, uh, um, and, and Ed Rosenberg as well. Um, they were saying that when seller support is looking at a case, they, they're also being timed, like how much they're spending on it. So it, they, 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 it's inefficient for them. The algorithm looks at it like it's inefficient if they spend time kind of really diving into what you're saying. So they're just quickly gazing it and then making Horrible. decisions, reacting, yeah. So that's like any time you call seller support, basically. No, it's not even they're seller support. The, they're on the clock. Uh, well, whether you're calling them or really writing an email, yeah, I, you know, they, it's about, they, it's all about opening cases and closing them because it's, it, they look at it like resolution based 
but oh, really it's but really just they could close a case without it being solved right so mm -hmm. that's what happens a lot do you have people on your team opening and closing cases for you constantly yeah full-time uh, full job uh, as far as like yeah reimbursements and things like that yeah 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 there's a lot of people offering that service today at mm -hmm. the white label expo mm -hmm. but but even if they're offering it um they're just giving you the reports and then they're probably letting you open the cases it's it's pretty simple you know right. to do but you don't want to automate that process because that's also against amazon terms of service like have a bot just send in all the reimbursements that's not allowed it has to be a real person creating it and sending it uh i i would recommend a company called seller bench and even you guys would want to look into that uh reimbursements uh, because there's a lot of products that are damaged, lost in warehouse, unless you're staying on top of every single one of your inventory. If yeah, you're not, probably not. If you're not, then you you have it. I believe it's still 18 months. It might be six months now that they can go back. Okay. I believe it's still 18, unless I I don't know why I have a suspicion that they might have changed it. But you could go back up to 18 months, uh, mm -hmm. and they'll look through all of the reports to see if anything was lost inbound or if anything was damaged or if uh, anything's missing or if or if a customer uh, got a refund but then didn't return the product in a, the 45 day period yeah. at 45 at the 46 day mark you're supposed to get a reimbursement for it uh, seller bench yeah and, and a lot of them they take like 15 to 25 percent but if you weren't going to do the work anyway right right you might as well get Exactly. That that's what we did, and then later on we just kind of copied what they had. Uh, like, oh, this is great. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what I I was happy with White Label, and that's why I go to like IRCE because I get to meet a lot of these software companies and see what they're coming out with next. And yeah, sure. yeah, there's, there's some great insight. There's a lot of there's a lot of great opportunity. I mean, we continue to grow private label. We have four brands in completely different categories. It's great. Yeah. That's what it takes to keep trying. Yeah, yeah, no, and we've had multiple. And, you know, why? one of my big fails was uh, bamboo washcloths for babies. I jumped on that with, like, and then in, like, literally a month time, there was, like, 400 sellers selling bamboo washcloths. I was like, okay. It sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just, it was, it, at that point, it was like a, it was like a, Penny's game, and I was like, I'm not going to continue this, you know. You but then have a lot of expired products. And no grocery. Is it all selling fast enough that it's not coming back expired? Yeah, and and we have great relationships with the wholesalers that we work with. You know, we work with national brands, brands that sell to like Albertsons and supply food for Walmart and mm -hmm. Wakefern by us shop right. Um, so now we have we have minimum six months. That we that we request, and if anything comes less, we can always we we return it. Yeah, they work well with us. So it's about just building those relationships. Sure. I like grocery because there's the no return policy on grocery. Yeah. So that's one of the everything's got any everything's got its benefits. So no return policy, but they can still refund them, right? They can, but it doesn't happen often. It doesn't happen often. Really? Yeah, yeah, not like not like what we do with apparel. With apparel, when when you spend a hundred dollars on a sneaker and you're unsatisfied, you're gonna fucking make sure you get your money back. But like when you spend ten dollars or twenty dollars on trail mix or whatever they're buying, they're like, ah, fuck it, I'll eat it. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally, and that and that's what happens. Or they'll say it's fake. <laughs> that, no. that hasn't happened. I've I've had fake I've had fake dove definitely. People think I'm selling them fake dove. I'm like, do you, do you understand it would cost me more to counterfeit this dove soap than it does to purchase it? <laughs> That's great. That's funny. So we were doing a lot of import products for a while too, and so that was that 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 became a problem. We had to nip that in the butt. It was great. It was some great profit, but it would be, it was like we were uh, we were getting like dove from the Middle East and stuff like that. So. That's and why, then, like, it, the different languages and it had on. like twelve different languages on yeah. the back. And <laughs> yeah. So that's why people would be like, "It's not real." Like, it's, right. it's real. It's well, real. Cover the nutritional facts with an American label, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you could do that as well, but most of us, we didn't. They just have the English and Arabic and whatever else on there. Do you guys sell in uh, other countries or just in America? Uh, a little in UK, and then the rest is here.
Yeah, yeah and, and UK were part of the pan Euro pan European program, so that means it sells in Deutschland, Spain, Italy, France, but it's fulfilled out of the UK. Was it hard to set up like? No, taxes no. And stuff? The 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 hardest part is setting up taxes, and, and you're gonna have to dish out some money if you want to do it. After, I mean, you could spend the time to learn it yourself, but to me, I'd rather pay. I'm like areas where I'm not an expert. I'm not gonna. I'm yeah, just. I feel it's like just if you do something wrong, then you're. Yeah, company, you know, yeah. So, like that. yeah. So we had to set it up for the UK and for Germany. That, you know, and and then you just, you have to set it up for every other one. But we're not. Those are the only two that we're selling in over there. But yeah, there's opportunity. I mean, now the now Middle East is growing. That's the newest Amazon market. The third largest is Amazon Japan. You know, there's opportunity. We just haven't really tackled them yet. Well, I mean, it seems like you got your hands full as it is. Right? Yeah, for for now. Yeah, I mean, I want to get there. I want to get yeah. there, but not not there yet. There's a, there's a great opportunity with sneakers overseas. Yeah, but paying those fees and that and dealing with that and yeah. sending it there and then the cash flow tie up for six weeks yeah plus it's tough listen i think there's just as much opportunity here you just make a little less there is but yeah there's there's a lot of opportunity with, with all that being said is there's a lot of opportunity in, in europe in the european market yeah i'm not ready for that yeah i feel like the european market is so different it is, right? Yeah. I mean, it's a whole different culture you have to yeah. understand. Like, I used to work for Nike in our, like, the flagship stores in the U.S. versus in Europe is, like, drastically different. <laughs> it's, like, unreal. <laughs> the thing that I see the most over there from the little bit that I do know when it comes to sneakers mm -hmm. is that they're more conservative. Like, they want, like, white with just, like, a little blue on mm -hmm. it while we're kind of super outlandish right. with our <laughs> styles. Like, we want, to, we want to big up as po as bright as possible and as mm -hmm. unique as possible. They're very not like that. Yeah. Yeah, they're the complete opposite. Uh, is it hard to get, like, suppliers when you have no, like, commercial address, you're dealing with a residential address. Yeah. Yeah. It can be. So you gotta make the leap, get it can be. commercial space. It can be, yeah. You can, um, you, you know, if you're starting off and you're worried about that type of expense, there's always subleases. So like where a large warehouse wants to rent out 500 square feet. Okay, yeah, that's... You know? Because it's a they need additional income and they don't need all that space. It's a good segue. My question was going to be, I, I have been talking to a supplier. They don't want to deal with me because I don't have a dock. Oh, yeah. wow. So yeah. uh, is there a way around that? Don't tell them you don't have a dock. No, they're crazy, dude. She's like looking it up on, uh, on Google like, Maps. Yeah, Google, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a big supplier. Yeah. She's like, if we can't get a 55-foot trailer oh, yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing there. The, she's the, like, our insurance company won't allow it. Yeah, 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 that's the that's same thing with us. Yeah, we have to have the 53 feet space, yeah. Got it. No, um, I don't know. You'd have to find, find and it's all in Florida? No, they, they're national. No, but I'm saying where where they're delivering it for you? Yeah, Florida. Where are you, in Boca? No, I'm an hour south of Tampa. Yeah, yeah, you'll make it happen. You, they're you a big grocery supplier. So, why don't you? Why don't you? Uh, how long are? You, how long are you bound, bound into your space now? I'm not. It's a month to month lease. It's great. But you don't want to get a dock for for to take on this. My uh, my the prices that I'm paying for the two spaces. I have four thousand square feet. Yeah. It's reasonable. So for now, I'm gonna milk it for as long as I can. Yeah. How about asking the landlord to build in a dock? Or is that not possible no, in the space? Not. It's Florida. Everything's fine, man. Yeah. You would have to dig everything up in order yeah, to do that. Dig, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That. Yeah. Listen, uh, eventually when I grow this spot, I'll probably either buy my own or yeah. rent something bigger with a dock. Um, we have a, I mean, you guys see the She's videos. She's expanding, right? Yeah. She's got a bigger spot, 20,000 square feet, something bigger? Uh, no, we've been there for two years now. Um, or going on three in March, actually. Oh. Um, but it's helped us to lock down a lot of deals with distributors and some big suppliers because yeah. they see that you know we have an efficient system and a clean spot and they know we're organized do you find that you lose uh, people that you trained 
No, no. So we've been fortunate. And that's one of the questions I get all the time. And it's like, no, because we, we take care of our employees. And like, you know, I, I, I value them. I value who we have. You know, I've trained buyers and I've never lost a buyer besides the ones that I've let go of because I just didn't feel like they were up to par. They didn't grow with the company. As the company grew, they didn't grow. And they're in the Philippines. No, they're all they're, they're all here. The they're all here in the U.S. Office. Yeah, I don't have a lot of VAs. I have two that kind of handle some invoice and invoices and stuff, and making sure there aren't discrepancies, things like that. But that's it. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, it's hard finding, like, for a buyer position, you, like finding people to, to first of all that understand Amazon, that never happens. So then you have to fully train them. Talk to us a little bit more about your uh, earlier years. You know, I think that. We're kind of in a situation, I don't know about your business, but my business is, is growing. And, yeah. Um, you know, I have growing pains. Yeah. Like I said. What's I, your biggest growing pain right now, you feel? Um, well, like I said, I have three issues, three bottlenecks for me. Yeah. Buying, we're doing the buying. My, I'm doing it, most of it myself. Are you concerned about bringing somebody else in because they might... St- I'm not concerned. You know, I, I have hired two people, one off of Craigslist and one as a referral. Mm-hmm. I have no problem with taking chances on people. It's just that buying is difficult, especially in our in the way we're doing our business today. We're sure. sourcing in a store. You know, it takes time. Sure. You know, and there's definitely a learning curve. Yes. Um, but it's not rocket science, right? You could teach it. Yes. Um, so I have three bottlenecks. Buying, which I'm not really outsourcing right now. Inventory turn and, you know, cash flow is probably an issue. But I'm dealing with cash flow. You know, I think if my inventory would turn faster, that'll fix my cash flow issue. Do you do you buy from the same store over and over? Yeah. Or is it different stores? No, we're to? buying from the same stores, discount it, stores. Is there an opportunity to go to the manager and ask for an inventory list? Um, I don't think I'm going to get one from TJ Maxx or Marshalls. No, I don't think so. Yeah, that could be difficult. I know some people in my space that are do- dealing with uh, Outlet uh, more and probably getting better interactions with managers who are probably giving them some kind of lists maybe yeah or at least calling them ahead of time saying hey i have x y and z if you're interested but i just haven't hit the outlet outlets by me as much as i, as I should just have you that time. have you um ever talked to fba pag who fba pag pag no i don't think so he he does all outlet mm-hmm. he just put a hundred fifty thousand dollars just ordered in his last outlet purchase just a few days ago. He was kind of threw it out there to us, let us know. But he does really well with that. I don't Where's do any outlet. Uh, Wisconsin. Yeah. When you say outlet, you mean TJ Maxx? No, like oh, the outlet Nike outlet, outlet stores and like those, uh, are, are they called outlet stores or what are yeah, they called? Yeah, they like the, yeah, yeah, the, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So that North does that. Right? Yeah. Exactly, the outlet malls. There's a lot of opportunity with those because they're close out, they're close out products you know and i feel like it it's good and that's why i'll connect you with him because i wouldn't be like oh he's in tampa bay you know where where you guys would be competing with each other but i feel like they kind of throw different products on purpose in different uh, areas so you guys could learn from each other and not compete yeah i'd love to speak to somebody about that like i said i've paid a few times in the last year to go and speak to people who are in doing the same thing that I'm doing. And I don't, yeah, he's not He's not that type. Like, he doesn't sell a service as far as that. I just know he's a good guy who sells a lot of shoes.